What's up guys, it's Crikey here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to beat Mordekaiser as Yorick. This matchup guide video is going to be a new format. Last matchup guide was a full game commentary, and I asked you guys which one do you prefer, the full game commentary or the shorter gameplay style, and I got mixed answers. Some people did say to combine both of them, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to have both of the formats stuck together and see how that works out. So I'm going to explain the matchup through the matchup guide style in the laning phase and then I'm gonna do a full game commentary straight after that for the mid and late game. Of course it can't be live game commentary because I have to commentate the laning phase and after and that needs to be planned out so let me know how this format works out. If it's not good then I'm just gonna swap back to full game commentary probably. Alright let's get into the game. The average elo of this game is master plus and here's the runes I am using. I prefer picking conqueror over grasp in this matchup. Some people do go grasp but I prefer the conqueror route because I like all inning the Mordekaiser from 2 onwards and I'll show you how I do that. This time I'm only going to show you how to do the conqueror method because that's what I personally do. Throughout this video I'm going to show you 3 different examples between 3 different Mordekaiser to show you that it works continuously and I just want to show you different examples for different scenarios. So coming into lane there's 3 things you need to know. Mordekaiser is going to start a Q. The wave is going to push towards you and you need to avoid his poke so you don't activate his free hit passive and you don't get too low on health. What I want you to do in lane is just to get CS and stack your Q up. But at the same time you don't want the wave to be pushed towards you too quickly and that's avoided by hitting the minions and you don't want to get poked out too much from Mordekaiser's Q. I'm just going to show you a fast forward example right here and then at level 2 is when you can start making actions. Alright, so I'm going to pause the clip here and explain how I played this correctly and how it should look like for you. So I have some ghouls stacked up which I can activate. I'm full health and the wave isn't too big. This allows me to do my level 2 all in, which you win every time if you have ghouls and you land your E. And this works every time, as long as you can play level 1 correctly and you can land your E. Here's another example in another Master Plus game. And don't worry, you don't have to play level 1 perfectly every time. This scenario is slightly different because the Mordekaiser invaded our blue side of his team and he got 2 assists from it. And with the invade he started the E obviously so he can get the assist and now he has an XP advantage and he's going to get a level advantage so I can't really stay next to the wave and that's when I lose my pressure. But it's alright, even though I messed up level 1, I still have a 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th chance. You can do this from level 2 to level 5. As long as you're not too low on health, you have goals and you can land your E. And as you see here, I find a winning opportunity and I all into him. He burns his flash and luckily Graves is there so he picks up a kill. What's cool about this matchup and what I find really good about it is that pre-6 you can actually always have a chance to kill Mordekaiser. You don't really get that in much matchup since Yorick is a weak laner. All you really need is to have Gauze, land your E, land your W and you just don't activate his passive. Even if you do activate the passive you can carry around it and still win. And here's an example right here. So, so far I've taught you how to beat Mordekaiser from level 2 to 5. And that's good and all, but what about level 6 onwards when he's always up? That's probably the main thing about Mordekaiser. And what I'm going to tell you guys is pretty surprising and it doesn't make sense, but I'll explain it. I don't build QSS against Mordekaiser. Ever since the slight nerf he got on his ult, so it's slightly shorter, I can actually survive his death realm. And all you have to do is just W him when he's in the death realm and run away. The thing is, I have no footage of this happening. I don't know why or how, maybe because my presence is just too much for these Mordekaiser players and how I play Maiden correctly, which I will show in the full game commentary. I just haven't got ulted yet, and I think the main reason is because I never press W in lane. They know I'm saving it for them to ult me, and then I'm going to W them, and that's probably why they never actually ult me. So it's kind of weird. I'm playing Yorick without a W, and he's playing Mordekaiser without O, and it's a trade-off I don't really mind. So let's move on to the full game, and whilst we do that, I'm just going to explain the build path I do in the early game. Alright, so this is the full game section. I'm not doing this live because I had to do a scripted laning phase. So it's not going to be a live full game, but I'm just going to commentate what I'm doing and my thought process behind what I'm doing, I guess. There's no mistake I did. This wasn't a master elo game. This was actually a diamond one game. So that was a mistake I need to correct. Uh, I actually had no games in challenger against Mordekaiser. So weird. Or all masters. I don't know. People don't pick him that much. It's an easy pick as well. So I, I really like that pick. 
Uh, anyway, yeah, leave the you the come into lane, and then of course I'm gonna play level one like I explained how I play level one. Play it safe. Don't get hit by his Q too much, and just get the minion so it doesn't get too big. Yeah, so this Mordekai is Diamond One. He's not Masters. All right, all these matchups are all in Diamond One. Haven't had a challenge of Mordekai yet. That's kind of disappointing. But I have faced Challenger Aatrox and Fioras, so I can make a matchup, guys, on those after and Aurelius. So yeah. Anyway, I'm level two now. Going to do my patented, patented, patented. I don't know if you have that word. But yeah, I'm just gonna go in. <laughs> I'm just terrible. Patent. Patent. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, I don't know what I'm saying, but yeah. So I've got a lane advantage now. He's half health. And I've got a lane pile, basically. I can actually kill him from. I can't kill him now, obviously, because the wave pushed in. I just want to push. My, my full process behind this is just to push this in. And don't get ganked. Because Mordekai I didn't leash, so jungler might be coming. That's an Evelyn though, she don't really gank pre-6, you don't see that that much. And if she does gank, it's an Evelyn, I can just box her out. So it's all good. So I'm, I can play up if I want. Let's give him a little poke there. Now, since I've got lane prior, I don't see much going to happen now because I can't really kill him. So what I'm going to do is just... Get out of vision sometimes, sometimes come into vision to confuse him and everyone else. Because when you get out of vision, what the enemy is doing right now is pinging you're missing, unless you're in bronze or something. And yeah, it really messes with people's head. And plus, I can help my jungler out quicker. Right now, Evelyn might be doing scuttle. She probably is doing scuttle because Udi just did bot scuttle, and that's something you want. You need to know. If your jungler's doing the scuttle, then the enemy jungler is probably doing the scuttle as well. Not much happening in lane right now. Mordekai is just playing passive. I can't really do anything to be honest. Alright, so it's going to push towards me now. I know it's going to push towards me because the back cast the minions. And I can actually look for a kill if it comes to the middle of the lane. Don't want to activate my ghouls because then it will push towards him after that. I don't want that to happen. Alright, Nocturne gets the kill on Cassiopeia. It's fine. Oh yeah, this Evelyn and Nocturne is actually do odd. That's what I remember. From what I remember, yeah. But yeah, it's perfect. It's going to push in towards me. I don't want it to push fully in towards me because you can get a free back if this whole wave gets under my tower. So I want to slim it down. Level 5. I can actually kill him now. If I can land my E. Wait, why did only one ghoul come up? No, that messed me up. I thought all of them were going to come up, but I was out of the radius. Unfortunate. But I can freeze it right now. Yeah, there you go. That's perfect. It's not under my tower now, so you can't get a free back off. I can just minimize the wave so it doesn't get too big. You died? Oh, you did that. Okay. Alright, I can look for a kill. I've got my ghouls set up. Wave isn't too big. I can ignore them. And if I can land my E, I could potentially get a kill. Oh, but he backs all the way off. Okay. Yeah. I think he knows the kill pressure, so he backs all the way off. He's gone. I'm six, and. So nothing happened, alright? Not every time you're gonna get kills if the Mordecai is playing careful. He's six now, so I'm not gonna all in, obviously. And now I'm going to explain how they never ult me because my maiden control. Alright, so when it comes to getting your first back items, it depends. If you're behind, I would go Merc Treads. If you're ahead or even and you're confident in your laning phase, I would first back Phage. What I'm going to do is push this in and get a first back Phage because I'm confident, obviously. Because this is only D1, so... If I was playing cautious, I'd go Merc Treads first item. I also have a TP. I'm not gonna TP in because that's a nice wave and he can't push it quick enough. So I get a free back. It's quite a free back, so I don't have to waste my TP. And get boots as well. And now I got TP to play around the map because this is season 10 and top lane. Continuously going top lane doesn't work 
sadly, because season 10 is a team game. You can't 1v9, especially when you're Yorick. You know, potential TP methods. I don't need to TP that though. So Cassie P is getting camped by the Evelyns. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna flame her because I can tell she's getting camped and she's not even doing bad for someone that's getting camped. All right. Nocturne's very going very deep, so I could potentially help him out because he's probably gonna try to get the red. And still with his red. All right, he's right there. Okay, he's trying to steal the camp. This should be a free kill. Land my E. Evelyn's close, but I can ignore her. It's fine. Oh, there she is. Okay, she flashes. I'm not going to be able to get her. Honestly, she's going to go out of the way. So I'm going to do just go back top because there's a wave top. I do miss a cannon. It's fine. I've got a kill and that's worth it. Mordecai's not going to ult me because I'm next to my tower. So if it ults me, I'm going to go into my tower. I've got my W as well. So this is why I don't get QSS. It's a waste of gold. There's no point wasting all that gold for no reason nowadays. Since his ult cooldown's gone. gone so he can actually survive the ult. I always eat that bush, just in case they end there. If they are in there, I usually get kills. That means, I'm not having casual fear. Doing some nice kiting. He backed, so I'm gonna push this in. What I can do is get a plate, or I could back. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I, will, I would have tried to get a plate, but it's not a cannon wave, and there's no point trying to get a, pa a plate without a cannon wave because, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna target a maiden, and I don't want to risk that. Since it's gonna target my maiden, and then Mordecai is gonna come and destroy my maiden, so I think I just hit my mic there. But yeah, Mordecai is gonna come and destroy my maiden whilst I'm hitting the plates, and it's not worth it because I'm gonna lose my maiden, and maiden's a big pressure. Oh, that I need. You're actually one of those champs where you just need to keep the O alive for a long time. One of the only champs I think that has a oh that you have to keep up every time, or you're just weaker overall. Alright, pushes out again. And also, how I'm not gonna bother all in him. I'm just gonna look around the map and see if I can do anything, because there's not much I can do really. I mean, it's just a stale lane. I couldn't get a kill pre five. Unfortunate. Sometimes I do get kills, sometimes I don't. And if I land, if I try to all in him, he's gonna ult me, and then I just W and run away, so there's no point. But what I do have is pressure, and that's when I can roam. Unfortunately, I couldn't do much there, but I always have lane power because of my my maiden. So it's a matchup where it gets stale. If you don't, if you don't get a kill early game, it gets stale like right now, just pushing it in and back in. But I do have TP, so I can help out my laners, which I am doing right now. See a perfect opportunity. Hide in the bush, or Mordecai is it now? It should be a nice kill. Land my E on both of them, and then Mordecai is TP in, which I'm gonna back off. Okay, he misses E, so it's perfect time to go back in. If he has his O, it's fine. I can still fight him. He's low right now. Get the broom. And yeah, we get it. All right, that was a perfect TP from me. I saw the perfect opportunity to all in, and then Mordecai did a panic follow up and didn't work out at all. And now I've got three kills and. An item, I mean, and gold, gold is wanted, so I'm ahead of the Mordekaiser now. It gets to a point where I just start all in the, the all inning the Mordekaiser without being scared of his ult. But I'm not at that point yet. If I had 24, then I would all in him every time. I don't really care. Alright, we're equals now in terms of kills. We got the Drake and we got the Herald. That TP changes a lot of things around. 50% kill participation. I'm more than 50, I got 4 kills now. More than 50%. Oh, 3 kills, 1 assist. More guys come into lane, I'm just gonna push this out again. It's fine, he can't do anything. He's not gonna ult me. I can attack him, and he's not gonna ult me. If he ult me there, I just press W and, and walk away. Nothing to panic about. It's why I never build QSS. They just don't ult me. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, if I'm behind, they would ult me, but then... I never get behind in a Mordekaiser lane. If I'm really behind, I might go QSS, but that will set me more behind because I twist gold. So, yeah, QSS isn't something worth buying nowadays. I'm always just going to have lane presence. If I landed that, I would have all in and Not use my W, though, because I save my W when he ults me.
Gonna roll mid. Nocturne's pushed in. Nocturne's an easy champ to gank. Not much abilities to run away with. As long as I can land my E. And my W. Now you guys walk straight into him. He uses E up. I missed the W. He flashes. It's fine because who is there. And that should be a kill. Evelyn's there as well. Just keep kite backwards. Okay, he went for the Uda and Uda gets killed. And he gets away. Unfortunate. Oh no, we got him. Oh, Swain must have got him. That's, that's pretty cool. Alright, that's a Drake. Risky Drake because Evelyn's alive and I'm gonna ping that so my teammates know that. Honestly, if she gets Drake, I don't really mind if we can kill her. There's no way she can get back out, but she didn't even bother us, so that's all good. Mordecai's a roll mid, wasting his time, which is good for us. Maybe the pink ward. Always warn your teammates if, stuff, if you feel like they're gonna get ganked or something. I don't bother typing in chat. Once in a while, I might type if I can't communicate through your ping, but I don't usually do that. So even though Cassiopeia has been getting camped, he's not too behind, which is impressive. I don't think she's behind at all actually, she's actually ahead. But yeah, again, I'm just going to push it in and probably from mid. Pushing the can wave and roll mid. Or roll to the blue if I want to. Thing is, I'm not going to do anything, there's no point diving in. I've got a CS advantage, I've got a kill advantage. Nothing much to do, you know. That was up, I would have stole that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think about ganking mid again. Once she gets her blue, I'm going to go mid. I mean for the right moment. Okay, he wastes his Q, so his movement speed is gone now. And now I just need to land my E. And W, okay. Evelyn's here. That was a nice ult from Kesri Peel. I rate that. And just like that, I counter gank as the top laner. <laughs> and yeah, that's game changing. That's something I've been doing a lot in Season 10, is just pushing it in and roaming, because Season 10 is different compared to other seasons in terms of top lane impact. Not much you can do top. If we if they if they are playing passive like Mordekaiser is, there's nothing you can do. You just have to roam, you know. Exactly what I did there. I TP and I roam. I'm I'm doing more ganks in the jungle at this point. I am the second jungler. It's sad, but top lane impact. I'm guessing. Again, he's just hiding on the tower. What can I do? There's nothing I can do. I can back and get a Trinity Force and then I can wreck him. Sadly, I can't dive Mordekaiser because he's oh and I don't like the way the maiden works and uh, goes. Because when you're under the tower, it targets the champion, so you take aggro, it's really annoying. They need to change something about that, but there's not much you can do about it. What I'm going to do is push this in and get it back, so I can get my big power spike. Alright, I can just 1v1 him at this point. Even if it ults, I'll press W, but... Again, Mordecai is, uh, is going to hide under the tower, so unfortunately there's nothing I can do. I mean, in lower elos they won't do this, they probably fight you, and I would love to show a lower elo, elo game like Plat or something, but I don't think that's educational because they always make some big mistakes and I can just kill them continuously. If you don't mind me showing you lower elo games like Plat below, then I might do full game commentaries of lower elos because in higher elos people play passive like this, when, when they know they're behind they won't. They won't play aggressive. You don't really get that in higher elo. I mean, to be fair, this is D1, so... It's... They do usually do that, I don't know. But yeah, I get a free tower clear backed. Use your W before you, you go into tower range, by the way, so... Yeah, thanks it. I did there. And he's just there, I mean... He just lost his tower, he just, he's done nothing for his whole team. I've got 8 kill, kill participation, more than half. And he's... Has no... None. <laughs> Zero kill participation. This is me changing the game with just my presence moving around the map. That's what you have to do. Something I need to practice a bit more in EU West, but yeah. Really hate this knocked out. Take jungle camps. Dead 
this typical thing you meant to do in your head, you take everything, keep that CS number up. Maybe gank them not telling if he's gonna play like this again. This guy has really no awareness. <laughs> oh, because Evelyn's there. I forgot the the do Oh, how did I miss that? That even so free. Oh, the, oh no, that is sad. Nah, I have to flash for that. That's just sad. And and then she flashes. Ah, oh, and yeah, I can dive this man. There we go. Bit sad. More guys is here. What's he gonna do? He misses you. <laughs> Maybe he would have ordered me there, but yeah, he misses you. So okay. Maybe I could show example here. Is he gonna ult me? He's not ulting me. Is he? Why didn't he ult me? <laughs> if he ulted me there, he could have got away. I would have been in the one v one still, but he would have got away at least. Cause I'm pretty really hard right now. Might need a TP. This, yeah, just losing it. Free double kill for me. Perfect. Perfectly set up by Swain. And my ease. My hands aren't cold today, so I'm landing my ease and I get a nice double kill. Like I said, my sometimes I'm landing every, sometimes I'm not landing any. Comes down to cold hands. I've got so much gold. I can get Derek's first back, maybe. I get not gold. Yeah, no more build Derek's gauge uh, into damage item again. Because I'm pretty fed this game. Merc Tread is the only thing I build against uh, Mordekaiser. QSS. If I'm getting ulted a lot in team fights, I'll build a QSS. Build a QSS. Doesn't really happen though, so. Man, I'm so fed. I always get a Doran's Blade after my Sterex, unless otherwise I need to get Tanky, then I might get Ruby Crystal. My CS per minute isn't the best because I'm roaming a lot, so that's that as well. Some games I am just staying in lane, I'm not roaming, and I, I can keep a high CS advantage, but those type of games, you're just re relying on coin flip. If your team does bad, then you're screwed. It's really annoying. I've had that so many times. I think that's why Shen is such a good champ now because he can just ult and help bot lane and stuff. So, yeah, good solo queue champ right now. They can fight, I'm gonna split push. Play towards Yorick's strength. It doesn't really matter, I think just one that anyway. It's a free tier 2 tower for me. They're really pan overall. Like I said, cannon minion. I said this before, but if you see, if you have a cannon wave, that's an indicator that there's a free tower ahead of you. You will 100% get a free tower with a cannon wave. You did melt towers down with cannon waves. Use a W, so it targets the W. Okay, I'm just melting the tower right now. That's what I really like about uh, Yurik. We're really ahead now. Two inhibs. Put my W down. Trap the Mordekaiser. And this game's pretty much over, I guess. That's a wrap, boys. Um, I carried this. All right. Seven zero six. Hundred seventy eight CS per minute. Uh, it's hundred seventy eight CS. Twenty minute game. It's ended pretty quickly. D one game. Uh, again, sorry, this can't be a master plus game because I haven't faced a master plus Mordekaiser yet. <laughs> Okay, so let's go through a quick rundown on how to beat Mordekaiser. Level 1, play passive, play correctly like I've shown you. Stack up your goals, don't get poked out too much. 2 to 5, kill participation, kill potential is there. You can kill him, burn flash, get half health on him, get a good lead. If you don't, then it's fine. Level 6 plus, you have your ult up, he has his ult. First back, you want to get a Thage or a Merc Trez depending on, on if you're ahead, if you're behind, or if you're even. Even ahead, Thage, behind, Merc Trez. Use a W whenever he ults, alright? He might not be ulting you like he, they did to me, like I showed in this gameplay, but whenever he ults, just press W and walk away. He might flash off to you and that's his flash gone, I guess, and you can flash away maybe. Or you just play smart, push it in, and roam when he gets under the tower because he's not going to W straight away. 
like I like I did in this whole game. Just watch my full gameplay. Of what I just did. You, you probably watched it because this is the ending. You just saw me push in and roam. If he's not gonna fight me, that's that's pretty much it. Don't force anything. Roam. All right. So we come to an end. Again, let me know if you like this format. If not, I'm gonna go back to my full game format. And or if people request, I might go back to my old old format, which I did with Darius and Timo. But yeah, that's the ending. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more knowledgeable content, and I'll see you in the next one.